Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today I'm going to be continuing our time series series with another complex question from an external exam. And as you can see, we've got a seasons theme going on. It's the Christmas season on today's video. I've even got some snowflake earrings to celebrate because right now we're heading into Christmas 2020. And what a year it has been. In fact, this Christmas I was supposed to be having a white Christmas in Philadelphia in the United States, but COVID had some other ideas. So I'll be hanging at home with the family and sweating it out here in Brisbane. Now this particular video is aimed at students in Queensland, Western Australia and Tasmania in year 11 and 12, depending on where you are. So we have a question here from our West Australia Maths Applications exam from 2018. It's always a good idea before you start a question just to have a read of the question first and inspect and have a bit of a think about what you're looking at. So we have a graph that explains some quarterly retail turnover per person, that's what capita means in Australia, it's the average amount that people are spending at retail outlets every quarter of the year. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a pattern that's going on. We've got some sort of seasonality where we've got these big spikes in December, which we would expect that's when everyone does their Christmas shopping. And if it was me, I would probably would say that I've contributed a bit to that spike this year. And then down the bottom, we've got a big fall off after December. That's when everyone's run out of money. And then as the year goes on, people start to spend a little more heading towards the end of the year again. So our question is actually asking us, um, to complete the time series plot and we've been given the data for the next four seasons. So here we're being asked to do some graphing. Now it's important that when you do graphing with a time series that you use a ruler. So if you're doing an external exam you'll be required to do this in pen and you're not allowed to use liquid paper. So to save yourself some time it's a good idea to just have a think first before you suddenly start drawing random dots on the graph and make sure you're putting them in the right place and that will save you a lot of heartache when you get it, if you don't get it wrong. So we've got some numbers here for December we've got 3,521. Now obviously we're going up in 200s on the y-axis and the halfway points 3,500 so we're just going a little bit more than that. Then we've got March, that's down here, and then June, and then September. So that's kind of the pattern we'd be expecting as well based on what's happening in the previous years. If you had all of your numbers up the top, you might be reading the graph wrong. You might wanna have a bit of a think about that. We're now gonna join our dots with straight lines using a ruler. And that's why I'd always recommend drawing those dots first, just in case you've got them in the wrong spots. So we've now finished part A. Okay, part B is asking us to describe the time series. And you would remember from my very first video when we introduced time series, that time series TS tell a story. So we're describing something. It's a short paragraph to describe what we're seeing here. So I would start that by saying that overall, there's an upward trend. We can see that our lows, which are occurring in March, are a little bit higher every year. So there's that upward trend in the retail turnover per capita. Notice that I've actually talked about what is actually increasing. I haven't just said there's an upward trend. I've actually related it back to the context. That's important. The trend also shows seasonality that peaks every December and has its lowest point every March. That's all I really need to talk about with this graph. I don't have to start in December 2013 and say it was high and then it went down and then up a little, up a little and then up again and then down. I don't have to describe it in that kind of detail. Just talking about the key features of the graph. One, that there's an upward trend and the other that there is seasonality. The next question gives us an equation for the line. So we don't have to actually work that one out. That's kind of handy. We've just got to predict sales for December 2017. Now you would recall that that, that means predicting we're going to be extrapolating the data and we're going to be inserting the information that we've got from our graph. Now firstly, you would also know that from this one that our 17th quarter is December 2017. So you'd actually need to count along. We've got three years shown, so three times four is 12, and then we've just added another four, so now we're up to 16. So that next quarter on that we're missing is December, it's the 17th quarter. So that means Q equals 17. We simply need to now substitute that into our equation, and then we can work out that our value for T is going to be 3,149.989. Now there's a lot of other decimal points there. Important thing to remember though is that T is equal to sales, turnover. So you do need to write a statement here and relate it back to the context of the question. And I would be saying to round that off correctly. Now you'll notice that 
um, it doesn't make a lot of sense even to round that to 99 cents because that's very very precise and we really would be rounding this to the nearest dollar to make a logical submission for our exam. The last part of this question provides us with the seasonal indices and asks us to calculate a missing index and you'll notice that these indices are given as percentages with two decimal places. Do be familiar with them in either a percentage or decimal form. Now you would recall that the sum of these indices should add up to four if it was a decimal or 400 percent if they're percentages and the average of those will be equal to one or 100 percent. So we're going to take, to find the June index, 400% less the indexes that we've been given. So let's subtract 303.96 from 400 and we find that the June index is 96.04%. Now it's very important that you present your final answer in the same form of the indices you're given. So if you're given the indices as a percentage, then you're going to give your answer as a percentage as well. A good way to check your work, and you should always check your work, is to add up all four of those indices and see if the average is equal to 100%. And just double check that when you add all four together, that it does come to 400% in this particular case. Well, that's all we have time for in this particular video. And we are at the end of our video series on time series. Thank you so much for joining me. I would highly recommend that you hit that notifications button because if I do add to this series at some point in the future, you're going to want to know about it so that you can end up with um, even greater knowledge. I would also recommend following me on Facebook as well because on Facebook I have extra tidbits, fun facts and also I do provide a little bit of background as to what video is just being uploaded to the channel. So if you've got the notifications turned off on YouTube and you're on Facebook more often, that's a great place to be. Well, I hope you and your family, wherever you are, have a wonderful Christmas and well, if you're watching this at the beginning of the year, I hope it was a great one. I hope mine is too. Have a lovely day.